So Microsoft has a big announcement coming up on June 24th regarding Windows 11, but it looks like there was a leak online, so we're gonna take a look at it right now with a new installation sensation in your coming with. Let's go. Hey guys, how are you all doing? If you're new here, welcome. My name is Crazy Ken, and what I love to do sometimes is what I love to call an installation sensation, where we install a new operating system that we've never tried before, and then we test it out. We like to look for bugs, we like to test features, and of course, I like to use my handy dandy flash drive that I've had with me for like a million years doing this stuff. So, we're gonna plug this in, and this is the leaked build of Windows 11, so we may not see everything in this particular build. We might see more on the June 24th announcement, but we still have some cool stuff to explore. I've never tried this before. This is my first time. You're all witnesses. And we're doing this straight up. We're installing this directly onto a 2013 Intel MacBook Pro. No virtualization, none of that. We're doing it straight up. So as we can already see, the logo looks different. Ah, I feel like it was just yesterday that I released the Windows 10 technical preview episode of my old show, Tidbytes. <laughs> Actually, no, it doesn't feel like yesterday. It does feel like it was like six years ago. I lost track of time. But we are using English, English, and US. So let's do that. And I love clicking on the old school buttons. <laughs> that just seems to be a pattern that Microsoft does. The newer systems are always using older, like previous version UIs for their installers. That's typically how it goes. I don't have a product key, at least not yet. So now we have a version selector here. Looks like Windows 11 Home, Windows 11 Home N, I don't remember what N means in this case. We have Education, Education N, Pro, Pro N. There's a lot of different versions here. I'm gonna choose Pro and see what that does. And it should start up, oh wait, no, wait, we need to, this PC doesn't meet the, oh my gosh, seriously. This PC doesn't meet the system requirements? What? Uh, it, it is um, an almost eight-year-old computer. So let's try Windows 11 Home. Oh, crap. <laughs> we can't run Windows 11 on here. All oh, that sucks. I can bust out my ginormous iMac, and we can try it on there. Okay, change of plans. And here we are. We have transitioned to a 10-core i9 something gigahertz iMac <laughs> with a... 5700 XT G GPU. Uh, hopefully this is good enough for the Windows 11 leaked build. <laughs> so let's boot into that. Uh, let's try the whole Windows 11 Pro thing again. We'll do next. Oh, this PC doesn't meet this. System. I wonder if it's a driver issue. Yeah, I just, maybe this thing just straight up cannot interpret the hardware properly. So I think we're gonna have to go to a virtualization solution. Hey, this is Tech Misadventures. It would not be a Tech Misadventures episode without problems. <laughs> Thus is the Crazy Ken Curse's mission, to make my life a living Dell. Okay, so we are now on plan C of this installation sensation. Hopefully it works, third time's the charm. I'm just gonna use VMware Fusion. I've used their stuff a bunch before. I put the ISO into their wizard. I don't know, man, what do you think? Give, give it at least four. And RAM, 8,192, we'll give it eight gigs. Hopefully this all works. <laughs> and you are running this virtual machine with side channel mitigations enabled. What are we in court? Ch I've never seen that, I don't even care anymore. All right, let's do that, see if it works. Boot from the CD and boom, we have some windows, which is good when you're installing windows, you wanna see those. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be a little fuzzy and I'll, square because we do not have all the display drivers and everything installed right now so it really doesn't understand the capabilities of this computer yet we're going to do windows 11 pro because it sounds pro okay we did not get this far last time we got to read every word of this done it's not an upgrade we got to do a custom install so we have our unallocated space here we'll make a new partition on there full size to ensure windows features work correctly whatever okay so it's got all of its Partitions, I guess it has to make some reserved things. So we'll say, yep, install on drive zero partition, partition three, primary, and boom. Okay, well, this is already going a billion times more smoothly than installing it straight up. I tried to be a cool kid and not use a virtual machine, but whatever, virtual machines are just so much easier when, you know, you have a life and you want to get back to it. And it's just cruising along, 35, 38. So now we're in the installing updates at already. Okay, we're restarting, so we'll click restart now. It is going super fast, but it is coming from a fast SSD 
you know, just onto itself. It's not coming from a slow DVD or anything. And we're rebooting. Getting devices ready, starting services. Hold, oh, slow down, I can't read. And we're restarting again. Ooh. Okay, we got a new sound. Oh, okay, this is new animations and graphics everywhere. Okay. The sound was okay. I kind of want something maybe a little more exciting than that, but you know, whatever. It's all good. But yeah, all of this looks completely new. Looks like we have that inertia scrolling there and a different scroll bar look. A lot of rounded corners. It looks like they're pushing the rounded corner thing. We have rounded corners on the windows, rounded corners on the highlights and the fills and on the buttons. Pretty sweet. Steve Jobs would be happy. So we have a cool little loading thing there too, a little different. Nice animations there, wow. Looking pretty cool. Is this the right keyboard? US, absolutely. Want to add a second? No friggin' way. I've never done that in my life. Again, we still need to wait to see what happens on June 24th. We might see more features and bigger under the hood changes on that date. So subscribe and stay tuned because I want to cover that news as well. As of right now, I can't expect anything major aside from UI tweaks. It's probably still a lot of the same underlying code, which, you know, has been around for a long ass time, but maybe that'll be changing on the 24th. We'll find out as soon as we can. So set up for personal use, yes, boom. Security questions, really? What is this, 2002? Okay, what was your first pet's name? Um, none of your business. What was your childhood nickname? I can't believe it's not Blubber. So, location, no. Find my device, no. Diagnostic, diagnostic data, no. Anyway, advertising, no, screw you. And accept. Now let's see what's new from Windows. I wonder if they leaked this on purpose. You ever think about that? Do you think they did that to like drive up the hype? Ooh, hey, hey, wait a minute. Oh, sh <laughs> Sorry, I almost knocked my phone off the table. This like um, ethereal blurry glow in the background is new. I'm digging it. Ooh, another new sound there. I'm guessing the whole soundscape has been, oh. Okay, all right, we're just jumping right in. So yeah, I'm guessing the themes and everything have been tweaked as well. New wallpaper, that looks pretty smexy. So uh, at first glance, yeah, we're gonna get the drivers installed so we can actually like use the pixels that I paid for. But at first glance, icons look refined and new. They are center aligned by default, kind of reminds me of Mac OS, which is sweet. And we have this new rounded corner start menu. and. It looks very inspired by Windows 10 X, which was a system made for dual screen devices, but it looks like, and I don't know if this was the plan from the beginning, that Microsoft is actually pivoting, or maybe this again was intentional, pivoting to make that dual screen device aesthetic actually be the mainstream look for their desktop OS. So yeah, um, okay, good start. We do need to get drivers and other thingamabobs on here. So, but I am liking the colors of this. Um, however, the inconsistency of square corners here and rounded corners here is weird, but you know, this isn't really official yet. This is a leaked build. So we'll see what happens. Any who's all set up 64 bit. And we do have rounded buttons here. So it looks like the, that that's working. <laughs> so let's see. Okay, so far so good. So welcome to the installation. We'll do that. We'll do complete. Oh, wow. That threw me for a loop. I did not think the radio button was selected. Usually when I click a radio button, it fills in. In this system, it just kind of highlights the rim. That was really confusing at first, but I guess that's just what they want to do. Okay, so now we are installing. And oh, now we have rounded corners on here. That's interesting. So I wonder if it needed a driver to put rounded corners on these <laughs> windows here. You must restart, okay. Yes, now we have rounded corners on the file explorer. Okay, so yeah, that was clearly a driver issue. But as we can see, rounded corners there, rounded corners here, animation is working. This is, this is cool. Okay, do we have like frosted glass? Go oh, yep. We got like the frosted glass look in the taskbar. Oh, hello, hello. Nice frosted animation there. Okay, I had a feeling we'd see something like this. This is kind of like in Mac OS when you hover over the green button, you get a pop-up menu. But, you know, of course it's okay. It doesn't really matter who came first with the feature. I really couldn't give a crap, but Microsoft, you know, they really made the whole snapping feature like mainstream from the beginning. Uh, that's one feature they do really well. So now it looks like we can trigger it from clicking like that, which is pretty sweet. And then we can pull it out. Uh, let's actually ch take a look at the settings. 
And again, as part of an installation sensation, we're just experimenting. I've never used this before. So it looks like we have some of that fluent design inspiration there. You can see like as I hover the cursor around, it kind of like triggers like a highlight fade around the buttons. Interesting. Let's see if we can get a dark mode. Yeah, I know we need to activate to customize. Hmm, that's gonna be interesting. How do you activate a leaked build of Windows? I mean, I'm sure people have customized. Well, I do have a product key from like a million years ago. Can I just type that in actually? I wonder, hang on. Windows is activated, hell yeah, dude. My freaking key from nine years ago still friggin' works. Dark mode. Oh, 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 oh yeah, oh shh. Ooh, need to change my pants, just kidding. That looks really cool in dark mode. I am a dark mode sucker. I am all for dark mode. We can get that nice transparency going on in the taskbar there and in the start menu there. Look at that, okay, that is hot. And it looks like we can turn the transparency off if we want it to be more opaque or we can keep it on and get that like frosted Gaussian bleh. Let's go to themes. Let's just see what the, okay, here we go, Windows Dark. Yeah, oh yeah, baby, that's what I'm talking about. I love me some dark mode. So we have Windows Light, Windows Dark, Glow, Captured Motion, Sunrise, and Flow. Couple different themes going on here, okay. Pretty cool. Let's see flow here, not from progressive. Very nice, very cool. I, I'm gonna stick with Windows Dark. I really like this wallpaper here. It, it, I, I don't know really, it's abstract. It looks like maybe like paper or something, but uh, looks really cool. Okay, so now let's see, we have search here. Ooh, you see that? When you click it, the highlight kind of animates around the icon. That is fascinating. All right, we got here, this is probably the task view. Oh, dude, the icons have their own custom animation. Look at that. Oh, that's that's a little touch I really like. What, what do we got here? So we have widgets. Hello. That's a name I haven't heard of in a long time in the Windows space. You need a Microsoft account to use Windows Dashboard? Screw you, dude. <laughs> I don't want... No. Fine, you win. I'll sign in. Okay, so for the fourth try... Widgets, there we go. We have weather, stocks, NBA. I don't really care about news stuff. If I can find a way to get rid of that, I would love to get rid of that. I don't need to be bombarded with that, but weather and stocks, I guess I'm cool with. That's pretty cool that we now have like a, kind of like the old Windows 7 or even Vista days with the sidebar, <laughs> remember that? Those widgets, that was fun. So yeah, now we have uh, that little thing that pops out there, okay. So it looks like we have like a bit of a bevel highlight here and on the tool tips as well, very cool. And again, custom animations for what you click on. But another thing I noticed is when you quit an application, the icons kind of just like bump down. Take a look. See what I mean? They kind of just like shuffle down. And if I open it up, they kind of just animate kind of playfully. I think that's pretty sweet. Got the right click menus, rounded corners. Pretty sweet. Oh, that one, that, there's no rounded corner there. That's interesting, the, the right click. Okay, the right click menu here, you still get these cool shortcuts. This has the rounded corners, but if you right click on edge, you don't get the rounded corners. But if I right click on these other apps, I do. Now there's no rounded corner for when these pop out. I forgot what the formal name of these little sheets are. Nice sound. But yeah, there's no rounded corners there yet, but it looks like we do have rounded corners in most other places. And it looks like the contextual menus here too also have rounded corners, so that's interesting. So, let's see if we can summon the old stuff. So it looks like we still have the old school control panel in here, <laughs> if we want. Uh, let's see, oh, let me see, phone dialer. Might be hidden somewhere. <laughs> you can still go to run, type in dialer, and you get the phone dialer. That's so freaking cool, <laughs> it just looks so out of place. Yeah, th th this is a masterpiece right here, anyway. There we go. Windows 11, Windows 11 Pro, OS build 21996.1. I am really curious to see if they're gonna do any significant underpinning changes. The one thing that's tricky for Microsoft is they have so many users that rely on backward compatibility, they can't really do what Apple does and you know burn the past and move on. That would be a disadvantage to their business. So I don't know how they're gonna pull off underlying code changes because I'm guessing, just like Patron Serlet likes to joke about, you still have DLLs, the registry. DLLs, the registry. 
disk defragmentation. No end user should ever have to know about that. You know, you could probably still pull up the registry editor and have this old school looking thing, but like there's pros that need this stuff. And actually, circling back to the Windows 10X thing I mentioned before, someone did notice there were mentions of Windows 10X inside of Windows 11 here. So yeah, I don't know. I guess this stuff is just always gonna be in here. Or maybe there's gonna be like a, I don't know, some sort of rollout of this stuff getting phased out, kind of like what they're doing with Internet Explorer. Okay, so let's see what else we got in here. This is the new start menu design. It looks like live tiles are gone, which I'm personally okay with. I thought live tiles were kind of goofy. So it looks like alignment we can, oh, that's nice. Nice animation. We can move it back to the left if you are used to it being on the left. And we can also trigger on and off widgets. Man, I love these little like kinetic animations. I don't know if that's the physics term for them, but just uh, they're just really playful looking. Let's take a look here. Go away, Mac OS doc, we don't need you. But yeah, just, they pop up, they slide over and kind of like have a little bit of inertia and momentum on them. Just very cool, little touches like that. Let's take a look at sounds really quick. So we have in our themes here, sounds, which still comes up in the old Win32 control panel, but hey, wouldn't expect anything different. I'm not sure how many of these are really new. Again, I haven't used Windows in a long time and when I use Windows, I don't really have sounds on. Device connect. <laughs> or no sounds. Oh, they still got the old like, that was a Vista sound, that goes way back. So as Microsoft teased on Twitter, this is just the start. So I'm sure we'll see a lot more news on June 24th. So feel free to subscribe and stay tuned for that because I'd love to cover the news as much as possible when I can. Also, I do other episodes on this channel in addition to new technology stuff. I love making episodes about rare technology, retro technology, and of course, I love doing tech scam busting. So feel free to check out all of those other episodes on the channel, and there's more coming. Feel free to drop a comment down below and let me know what you think about Windows 11. Thanks for sticking with me, catch the crazy, and pass it on.